You know, every once in a while I receive an email that's kind of a, either scathing remarks or questions. And in both cases, my channel has made it clear that I'm going to read these things unless you specifically say don't read them. Uh, you might, you know, you might go, well, just the content of it alone could give me away on who I am, and I'd rather you not read that. If you say that to me, I won't read it. But if you don't say that, automatically, um, you're giving me permission to read it. Now, to kind of balance things, I, by default, will not use your name unless you specifically say, hey, use my name in that. In this case, I'm going to read it because she didn't say not to, but I'm not going to use her name. But it's this very attractive girl. And uh, this is the second time she's written to me. And uh, she writes here, Hello, you may not remember me, but I want to ask you the question, is religion a waste of time? You kindly made a video and replied in a very helpful manner. So once again, I would like your opinion. It's been said that people need to strive for something, live for something, believe in something. Do you think it's all right for someone to believe in a religion in a non-harmful way in order to fulfill that need to believe in something good, thus becoming a good person, even though there's no proof that it's right? I sent her a nice uh, reply, and, uh, but I, I was kind of thinking that, you know, other people may have this question in their head, and they need to hear this answer. And the answer is simple. No, it is not okay, because in reality, there's no non-harmful way to believe in a religion, because you, you cannot live your life in a delusion. You cannot lie to yourself. You cannot focus your energies on something that just isn't real, something that has no payoff other than your imagined payoff. You know, like you've got people like Jesus Freak who go, well, there is a payoff because I'll be with the Lord in the afterlife. Yeah, that's your imagined. You have no proof of that. That's, that's nuts, okay? That, that's just something from a book and some, some asshole at the front of a fucking room on Sundays told you that crap. But you got nothing to, nothing to back that up, all right? So it's all fallacy. Don't waste your time on that. But the other fallacy that, that's involved here, the other waste of time is, is when she says... Uh, and it's not her. Don't get me wrong. This is not this beautiful young lady. It's not her. I hear this all the time. You have to believe in something. Who says? Why, why do I have to believe in something to lead a good life, to be fulfilled? I don't need to believe in anything. All right? And let's be honest, you don't need to believe in something good to become good. And people have just thrown that crap at this poor girl and at other people. Uh, for, for years, and, and that in itself is harmful. That they, they, they kind of inject this into people and make them think this way. The, the simple fact is this, if you feel that you should be good, a good person, then you already are. You already have it in you. You don't need a religion to tell you to be good, to be good. If you already have that thought in you that, you know what, I should be a good person, well, then you already have what it takes to be a good person because it's already in you. Uh, a good example that I used in the, in the email back to her is Mother Teresa. Uh, you know, this Catholic nun, she spends her life helping people. Yeah, I know there's some reports that really she was kind of a jerk. Um, but her overall uh, gig in life was she, she aided a lot of people. Now, she had been asked, and, and she attributed that to her faith. But I would say it wasn't her faith that made her do that. And the, the, the evidence behind that is that there are thousands of nuns in this world. And only a handful do what Mother Teresa did. The rest are just nuns. Now, they all share the same faith. As a matter of fact, it's such a strong faith that they devoted their life to their church. And yet, with such a strong faith, which is obviously a stronger than your average Joe, only a handful go out of their way to do the, the whole gig that Mother Teresa did. And that kind of shows me that it has nothing to do with their faith. Their faith is not what made, you know, Mother Teresa do what she did. 
devote her life to helping people. That was already in her. And had she been an atheist, she probably would have done the same thing. Now, maybe she wouldn't have been able to do it as much because she didn't have the financial backing of the church. But it was already in her as a person to be that helpful. The only thing that the religion helped her with was finances. So it has nothing to do with having something good to believe in because it is already in you. So don't, you know, you, you can sit there and spend your life wasting your energies focusing it on a mythology. You know, okay, I believe in God and, you know, Jesus and all that. And Jesus told me to be good and be helpful and love my neighbor and blah, 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 blah. And you can sit there and, and go to church every weekend and work in the church and make sure, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to be in the, the choir and I'm going to, you know, do this. Why? What? Why use that energy towards that? Take that same time you would have spent in that church and reading a damn Bible and praying and all this other bullshit related to religion. Take that time and do what's already in you. Be the good person that you already are. You're already good because you're asking about it. So you take that energy and you focus it on to actually changing the world around you. So you have your choice. You can, you know, you're, you can leave a legacy behind that you are a great church going person. Or you can leave a legacy that you help somebody. And let me tell you what. Had... Mother Teresa had just been a nun who, you know, spent her life serving the church, we would never have heard of her. But it was her deeds that came from her heart, not from her faith, her heart. That's why we remember her. And that's why she touched so many people. Well, until next time, this is Croesus.